So I grew up in a tiny flat in um, Penzance in Cornwall. My dad was on benefits my whole life. My mum was an immigrant. The way my mum was brought up, she's one of 13. When she was born, her mum died when she was seven, I think. So she grew up without a mum. So my mum had to raise 13 siblings by herself in the slums in the Philippines. She knows how to kill and skin animals. I think my mum's like this amazing person. Then when she came to England, imagine she got interrogated on the first day in the airport. Then she had to start cleaning windows the second day she arrived. Cornwall obviously is a very white area, it's like 99% white. So I was always like a minority there. And then when I go to the Philippines, I was also a minority because they'd see me as like um, mestizo, which is like mixed. I have always had like the sickening work ethic from when I was a youth, like it's just been embedded into me. I think I get it from my mum. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with football. Like every other kid in England, I was obsessed with football. I used to play before school, break time, lunch time, after school, every single day. I excelled in it. I got scouted, I got taken to Germany as a kid playing. Played for Plymouth Argyle, development squad, county squad. And then I fell in love with basketball. That's the game that changed my whole life. I had um, like my partner, he was called Jamie. We used to be S and J all the way. That was a whole thing. We were going to go pro together and do everything together. We played for National League Division Four men's when we was like under 16s. So we played for our own National League team, county team, college team. From there, when I finished college, we just I, that's when I typed into Google like number one university for basketball. So I wanted to. I knew I was going to be a professional basketball player. That's all I ever wanted to do. So then I went to the team called Worcester. They had won eight years back to back Bucks. We arrived. And firstly, it's like a culture shock for me because, again, growing up in like all white area, I was just like, right, there's other people like me here. In the first week, everyone was like doing up freshers, partying. I was shooting in the gym every morning. We used to train compulsory three times a day. And in between, your, in between the compulsory sessions, you're competing with people. So like, that's when you're, you're stretching, you're getting your extra shots up, you're in the weight room trying to get a better jump, you're watching game footage. By the last two years, I was training with the professional team all through summer, but then each time the season started, the coach would drop me to that second team again. My plan was to go back to the Philippines and try and go pro out there. But then, out of nowhere, on Facebook, the manager from Plymouth Raiders, they messaged me and they're like, sure, we heard you're doing really well in Worcester, like, when you come to a trial. The coach pulled me aside and he was like, yeah, sure, we want to offer you this contract. We're going to put you on a scholarship. You're going to be playing a leading role in the Division II squad whilst, um, developing in the professional squad. I remember just getting in the car and screaming at the top of my lungs, like, ah, like I knew I was going to do it. And then I went back home to mum's house to work in a bar over summer to get some money. Halfway through the summer, coach calls me and he's like, Sean, we need you to come. Um, our point guard can't make it from America. It's your time to shine. I remember getting to my first day of practice. They give you a training kit. They give you all this stuff. I picked up the ball to shoot. It was someone's job to rebound the ball for me. Imagine like if I was to go train now, you put up a thousand shots. Each time you miss, you have to run and get the ball. Now it's someone's job to get the ball for me. I got signed in one spot. It's, it's like mad. But then like two weeks into it, I was just like, oh, is this it? When I got to the stage of like being invited to play for the pro team and the division two team and practicing so much, it was like, like no one cared about me. I was just like another player in the system almost. All the imports had these like hotels, they had cars provided on wages, and I was staying on coaches so far. Then they just wanted me to train all the time and play all the time without, without any of the benefits from it. And if I was relying on that to get by, like I had, I had nothing. I'd sacrificed so much to be, to be in that position. It's like going through a breakup because that was my whole identity. I stopped playing. I moved back home, I worked in a school for a year before moving to Birmingham. I moved in with my girlfriend of four years at the time. Do you know what, on paper, it looked like the perfect life. I had a car, I had a job, eight to four. Ironic, that's the only time in my life I've been unhappy. I just knew that I had a greater purpose. And then I used to watch reality TV of her, and there was a specific season of um, X on the Beach back when it used to be big. And there was someone that looked like me that was on there. And I was like, no way, I didn't know that we could do this. I went on his Instagram afterwards and he's getting paid to go on photo shoots, he's getting paid to travel and make PA. I'm just like, nah man, I can do this. Like, why am I not doing this? So then I used to just literally, I get to work, I'll set my students um, some work. And then when they're doing theirs, I'll be on my phone and I'll be networking. And I'll literally message like 20 brands, 20 agencies, 20 music artists, 20 photographers. 
One photographer got back to me and we did our first little, uh, little collab thing, had them images, I posted them every day. Back then it was a grind just growing and this was like relentless for like two years, but applying to everything, I did every shoot for free. I picked up videography on the side as a side hustle to support the modelling, because um, at this point I was still like, I was getting bookings but not often enough to pay my bills. Just got into a few little reality shows, like small ones and Literally, after that first lockdown, my life changed forever. I got booked for one campaign um, in Amsterdam. And when I came back from that, there was a massive brand. And they messaged me, like, oh, Sean, like, we just want to inquire how much is your day rate and this and that. And like, they don't even know this. That was the first time I ever set a rate that high. And I was so scared, because I would have done it for free. Agencies that I used to message, they started wanting to sign me and stuff. There's like, like loads of producers that will try and manipulate you and they'll try and like, make you do stuff out of character. Mentally, if you don't have a good, strong um, support system around you, it can, it can mess with your head. I got a life coach, I got therapy, I got this and that to find out why you need validation, why you need to get ego stroke. It's things like this which I need, and I come home and I see my house better, and then I've got all these people that ground me all the time. Those four years of grinding switched the last two years I've been living my dream life. And then when I, when I ticked off that final goal, which is to be on the billboard in my own city, I got all my people to come out. Now basketball is like my therapy. When I get to the stage where I just feel like my mind's gonna explode, I'll go to a basketball court and I'll put shots up, or I'll go to a, a pickup game and I'll just play. And you just, you just switch off and you just go straight back to when you were a kid and it brings you back there. What I got from basketball, which I put into all of this is, I don't need to sleep. Like, I don't have any backup. Like, I'm the first Paleo in this country that's going to be a homeowner. I'm literally willing to die for it, I'm willing to bleed for it, I'm willing to get out of the mud. I'd rather die like a lion than live like a sheep.